Good morning, everyone. It is good to be with you. It has been another week, like so many of our weeks right now. And I want to draw attention to animals today as we offer our blessing to them. And one of the blessings that they have been offering my life recently is just a reminder to be present where I am. Over the past months, I have gotten to know the animals, my animals in my house and my neighbor animals better. From working with my cat snoring a few feet from me, to the chipmunks we've been working to evict from our garage, and the, the possum that we now call Goober who keeps getting trapped in the live trap we set out for those chipmunks baited with peanut butter. And we've discovered all of these ponds around our town that we now call Frog, Frog Lake and Swan Lake and Turtle Lake because of who lives there. And there's a gift in just being present with those creatures who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief, as the poet tells us. So in this moment, when there is so much to manage, I invite us all to turn our attention to our animals and our animal neighbors and listen for what they have to teach us. Come, let us gather. Come, let us worship. Good morning. My name is Chris Mazarosh, and I am the Sunday service coordinator for today's service here at People's Church. And I wanna welcome everybody to this wonderful, amazing, strange, uh, delightful, surprising time that we're having right now. I know for myself, I always, uh, I've been operating almost since the beginning of the pandemic with uh, just a low level panic. And then I come here and I'm reminded of my highest aspirations. And I come here and I'm inspired by the gifts of love and generosity that our church is. And I come here and I'm reminded that we're not isolated beings, but we're connected to the mystery of the universe and to the miracle of life. And so in that spirit, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you. Good morning for me as well. Um, our first song is Meditation on Breathing. I invite you to find a relaxed position for the best breathing possible. Here we go. And as I light my chalice, uh, we invite you to light a chalice at your own house and to say where a chalice is, be, is being lit so we all may feel the connection across the expanse of space. Uh, today's reading for our chalice uh, lighting comes from a 17th century Hindu poet uh, named uh, Turkaram, and he said this, 
I could not lie anymore, so I started to call my dog God. First, he looked confused. Then he started smiling. Then he even danced. I kept at it. Now he doesn't even bite. I'm wondering if this might work on people. Welcome. I would have a couple announcements that I want to share with you today. Um, we are so excited to be launching our RE program. Um, finally, we did a later launch this year to give people a chance to get their school um, years underway. And so now what we're doing, am I muted? Oh, my screen says, please unmute yourself. So what we're doing is to, um, we, next week we're starting our children's program and at 9.15 is the preschool program until 9.40 and we're emailing that Zoom link out to all the families. And at 9.45 starts our elementary Zoom class until 10.30. So people will have a break after that before church. And we're very excited to have our kids finally get a chance to see each other and check in and enjoy our program. And um, our middle school, we have a brand new middle school class that you haven't heard about yet because it's just been confirmed hot off the presses this morning because Chris Mesros is excited to lead some fun middle school activities at 6.30 on Sunday evenings to 7.30. And then our high school uh, youth class will be from eight to nine on Sunday evenings. And I just met with all the leaders for that and they're super excited. Um, we're also, today is the day, well, first, the other exciting thing that we're doing is because we know that some families can't all Zoom on Sunday mornings, we're putting together um, a video for elementary kids that we're sending out and it is going to be part of a um, Google Slide classroom. And so this is just a brief um, preview of what that's gonna look like. So you can see that I'm meditating there. If you click on me, it shows you a meditation. If you click on the bookshelf, you can hear a story or on the art supplies, you can have a craft or on the chalice, you get a chalice reading. Laura will, is going to lead this first session and on the guitar you get a, some music. So we're really hoping that this will be another way that families can interact with our program this year, which I'm really excited about. And then that all starts next Sunday, but today is the day that we're starting our adult class. So every Sunday from 1 to 2.30 is our first session of our, it's called Sitting Together mindfulness, uh, meditation, and introduction to Buddhist ideas of how to live in difficult times and how to cultivate more spiritual resilience. So um, we're very excited to have you join us on Zoom at one o'clock. The link is on the first front page of the website. And um, I, I think it's we're going on an adventure together this year. So I hope that you will um, all be able to join us. Thanks. And I have a couple of announcements as well. Um, the first is just a preview of next Sunday. So months ago, before the pandemic times, a, another minister reached out to me and said, how can I get in your archives? because I want to study up about Florence Buck. And that was not a name that I knew. And so we talked some and I told her where our archives live, which is at Western Michigan Zhang Legacy Center. And how, and she talked about how she was doing research on this woman who found her call to ministry at People's Church as an adult in the 1890s when Carolyn Bartlett Crane was the minister 
and who began a long-term relationship with another minister, another woman, and that they went on to serve in other places and all of this. And, and I thought, oh, it would be wonderful if you could come and preach and share this story, but she lived states away. And so one of the gifts of geography not really mattering is that she can zoom in and be our guest next week. So I know a lot of people's people are really interested in the history of our congregation. And this is a story that I didn't know. So I'm especially excited and I hope others come too. And then my other announcement is an invitation for all of you to join us at the Isaac Virtual Public Meeting, Thursday, October 22nd at 6.30 p.m. on Facebook or YouTube for the Isaac. So Isaac, as many of you know, is the congregation-based community organizing group that we are part of. It is over 30 congregations and community groups in Kalamazoo coming together to make change. And they are powerful and mighty and have accomplished so much from this brand new housing ordinance in Kalamazoo that ends discrimination based on source of income to the, the work getting families with school-aged children into housing that we will be voting on again in November to getting buses to run on Sundays to the launch of KC Ready Fours, which is a great preschool program for the youngest children in our community. And I could keep going. So come, because I think especially right now, it's important to be with people who share our values and to hear about efforts in our community, some led by people's people and some, and some not, to continue to make our city and our county closer to the beloved community. We're focusing on issues of housing, anti-racism, and violence prevention right now. And if Thursday, October 22nd at 6.30 p.m. is not a time that you can be present to the meeting, my invitation for you is to open the device, open the stream on your device and let it play in the background, maybe even on mute, because at the meeting, public, public officials will be invited to, to make commitments, to change policy and make our community better. And it is easier to hold them to those commitments if more people are present. So your, na your name on the Facebook stream or your presence on the YouTube stream being one more person who is watching, even if you're not actually watching, matters. So please come and participate fully. And if that is not possible, show up because it makes a difference. It's easier to hold our leaders to their word when lots of people witness them making their promises. So I hope to see you there. Praise 
People's people are generous people. And that shows up in many ways. This morning, I had an epically bad morning. Uh, the people who were on the pre-service call to get figure out the logistics heard about it. But it culminated in about 10 minutes before the service started, I turned on the drinking fountain here at church to get a drink of water, and then it didn't turn off. It just kept arcing and arcing and arcing. So I fiddled with it a little bit, but I am not a plumber. And so I called Denise Vallette, our, our lead custodian, and said, I don't know what to do. And she said, I'm not really sure what to do either, but I can at least tell you where a very large bucket is. And so I got the very large bucket and put it under there and crossed my fingers that I could you know, check on it and empty it during the hymns if I needed to. And then she called Gary Heckman, who, as many of you know, is retired from service as a facilities manager at a small college. And so just knows buildings in, in an impressive and great way. And he has already been here. And that was um, maybe 15 minutes ago that he got the call. He lives close. He moved, he came in here, he worked hard off in the corner. I could hear some clanging. And then he walked out and gave me a thumbs up and kept going. So the way that people just show up and the way you all bring your skills so we can be a team that can figure out how to fix the faucet when it stops or all of the other things that we figure out how to manage together is such a gift. We, none of us are in this alone, even if it feels like that sometimes. So I invite you to continue to be the generous people that you are and support our church with your talents, with your time, and with your money. The offering will now be received. Please join me for giving thanks. From the countless gifts we each have been given, gifts of life and love and sustenance, we bring these small portions to share in the works of love, which none of us can accomplish alone. Long ago, there were a group of hunters that were going out to hunt to get food for their village. They traveled a long ways that day and could not find any game until they came over a rise and they saw the largest rabbit 
any of them had ever seen. In fact, it was the size of a small bear. Immediately, one of the hunters raised his bow and arrow thinking, this rabbit will feed our entire village. But the leader said, no, lower your weapons. And they all crept up to the edge of the meadow and they laid flat down on their bellies. Right then, that giant rabbit seemed to look directly over at them, even though they knew they were well hidden, and nodded his giant head. And right then, he thumped his feet on the ground, and all rabbits came out from every direction, and they were all started to center in the middle and create a giant circle. As the chief of the rabbits began to thump his back paw on the earth, all of the rabbits began to dance. They did the most unusual dance. The hunters had never seen anything like it. They danced in pairs. They danced individually. The steps were fascinating to watch. It was so fascinating, in fact, that the hunters began to beat the drum with their hands on the earth as they watched, completely engrossed. And as soon as it began, the chief gave the head nod and all the rabbits fled from the field and the chief jumped directly over the heads of all the hunters and disappeared. As the hunters made their way back to the village, they were in awe of what they had just witnessed. It was the most unusual thing. So when they arrived back to the village, immediately they went to the leader, to the clan mother's house, and they described everything that they had saw. Hmm, she says, can you, can you show me the tune that they used on my drum? And they said, yes. She says, can you act out that dance for me so I can see it? And all the hunters said, yes. So she handed them her drum and immediately they began the rabbit dance. And after they finished, the, grandma, the clan mother said, ah, I think I know the meaning of this dance. We rely on the rabbits and the other animals in the forest for our food and for our clothing. This gift the rabbits have given us is for us to show them our respect and our gratitude for what they provide for us. So always after the hunt, we shall do the rabbit dance. For this is a special gift that they give the Iroquois people. We shall dance together and singly, all of us, at each time. It will symbol that we are in balance and in harmony with all of nature and grateful that it provides the sustenance for our lives. First reading today is the poem Blackbirds by Julie Cadwallader Straub. I am 52 years old and have spent truly the better part of my life out of doors. But yesterday, I heard a new sound above my head, a rustling, ruffling quietness in the spring air. And when I turned, Uh, to uh, when I turned my face upward, I saw a flock of blackbirds rounding a curve. I didn't know was there, and the sound was simply all their wings, just feathers against air, against gravity, and such a beautiful winning, a whole flock taking a long, wide turn as if one body and one mind. How do they do that? Oh, if we lived only in human society with its cruelty and fear, its apathy and exhaustion, what a puny existence that would be. 
but instead we live and move and have our being here in this curving and soaring world so that when every now and then mercy and tenderness triumph in our lives and when even more rarely we manage to unite and move together toward a common good we can think to ourselves ah yes this is how it's meant to be Over the last week, we have invited you all to send in pictures of your beloved animals. Here are some of the animals that people's people love. What a gift to see all your beloved companions and creatures you've spotted in the wild. St. Francis and the Sow by Galway Canal. The bud stands for all things, even for things that don't flower because everything flowers from within of self-blessing. Though sometimes 
It is necessary to reteach a thing its loveliness, to put a hand on its brow of the flower and retell it and words and in touch, it is lovely until it flowers again from within of self-blessing. As St. Francis put his hand on the creased forehead of the sow and told her in words and in touch blessings of earth on the sow, and the sow began remembering all down her thick length from the earthen snout all the way to the fodder and the slops and the spiritual curl of the tail from the hard spininess spiked out from the spine down through the great broken heart to the sheer blue milken dreaminess spurting and shuddering from the 14 teats into the 14 mouths, sucking and blowing beneath them. The long, perfect loveliness of Sow. And now I invite you all into a moment of offering blessing. And as I do that, I want to name for a moment what my, what I believe a blessing is, which of course, as Unitarian Universalists, we, we find our truth and make our truth in different ways. So this is not the people's church authority on what a blessing is, but sometimes it is helpful to hear what, what someone believes is happening in a ritual moment and whether that's to agree with or to disagree with that is enlightening. So I don't think offering a word or a touch of blessing somehow transforms something from an unblessed state into a blessed state. I think we are all blessed all the time. But I think we forget that. I think Sometimes it is necessary to reteach a thing its loveliness, as the poet says, to say out loud, you are important, you are worthy, I love you, you are lovely. Not even necessarily for that thing, that creature that does not understand our words very well, if at all, but for our own hearts, to look at those creatures that are in our lives and say, you matter, and take that ritual moment to do it. And so now I invite you into that, that moment. Perhaps you have a creature beside you, or a, or a stuffed animal, or a picture. So take, or perhaps you don't, perhaps if you're joining us by video, you can look at all of the different participants on this call and see that some of them have their cats on their laps or as their virtual background or have other animals right up close to the screen. And you can offer a blessing to one of those creatures. Or perhaps there was an animal that caught your imagination in the slideshow or an animal that you have a precious relationship with that is not physically present with you at the moment. And so I invite you to tell those animals in word or in touch that they are important, that you love them, that they are beloved, that they are lovely. So I give you a few moments of silence to bless the animals. And now we're going to create a word cloud of our blessings. And so I'm going to share a screen with you all that is a, a Menti slide. This is a, a presentation tool. 
and there will be a code at the top and a website link. So if you go to www.menti.com -E and a code will pop up or a place to enter a code and type in 9308282, you can put in a word of, or two of blessing. I invite you to do that now. Those of you who are joining us by video can see these words almost dance as more things are added, as more blessed words of blessing. And if you want to participate and have trouble navigating to the Menti website, you can enter words into the chat and I will add them there as well.
So the words that I see that are the largest, which means they've been said the most, include snuggles and cute, friend, comfort, sweet, soft, love, beloved, unconditional. Other words include, may all be well, may you be blessed, exuberance, stinky, floofy, rascal, patient, cuddly, mischievous. And I'm going to stop. Oh, there's more coming in. Never mind. And now I will stop our video share but we will save this image and share it with you on the, on the church Facebook page and in, and in other ways. It's good to have others' words of blessing on all of our preachers. It's a beautiful tribute to all of our companion animals and all the love that they bring us. We are fortunate to have them in our lives and they are fortunate to have us to care for them. So many animals in this world do not have good care or conditions in which they can thrive. And too many of our beloved friends have gone before for us. Their lives are too short compared to ours. So I want to take a moment right now to acknowledge both our pets who have passed as well as those animals that are living in these times and suffering due to climate change or abuse or neglect. And I start with a prayer by Joanna Macy. Um, written some time ago, but fits beautifully in this time of climate change. And she is seeking to learn from our brothers and sisters, from our siblings, the animals. She says, we hear you, fellow creatures. We know that we are wrecking the world and we are afraid. What we have unleashed has such momentum now. We don't know how to turn it around. Don't leave us alone, we need your help. We need each other to survive. Are there powers that you can share with us, fellow creatures? We, the lichen and the moss, have powers to share. We work very slowly. Time is our friend. This is what we give you patience for the long haul and perseverance. It is a dark time as deep diving trout. We offer you our fearlessness of the dark. I, lion, give you my roar, the voice to speak out and to be heard. I am caterpillar. The leaves I eat taste bitter now. But dimly I sense a great change is coming. What I offer you, humans, is my willingness to dissolve and transform. I do that without knowing 
what the end result will be. So I share with you too, my courage. So as we take in this wisdom from the animals and the plants that they give us on how to live in harmony with all beings, let us take a few minutes to acknowledge those things that weigh on our hearts with our fellow animal and plant siblings. If you have a beloved pet who has passed that you would like to honor their name, or any animals that are suffering that you're aware of that you would like to acknowledge, I invite you to do that either in your heart or silently with your family or invite it into the, or write it into the chat box. And Rachel will light a candle for each one as I read what you write. And let us all bear witness. Catherine Niesink shares her cat of 10 years, Satoki, I believe is the name. Next, a candle for Satine, Ann Shepik's beautiful cat. And the people on the couch next to me are wanting me to mention Buddy. Abu and Grace. From Chris Mesros, Chloe, Daphne, Raj, and Kayla, all cats, and Jenny the dog. From Tim Kiefer, Dieter, our handsome Weimariner. From Gay Walker, Ditto, Amber, Sienna, Keisha, and Bucky. From Emily Betancourt, Mays Blue, our Tibetan Terrier of 14 years, and um, you're typing them in fast. Okay, I got this. Of 14 years we had before Juniper from Laura McCollin and Mary Spradling, Widget, a dog, and Pinky and Pearl, two rats. Um, Zoe and Gemini, our beloved cats that have passed on from Julie. Um, oh, Satine is a dog. I knew that. Did I say cat? My bad. Rebecca LaDuca, our one true dog, Cassie, 19 years old, took me from childhood to motherhood. I love you, sweet girl from John Rice, animals who have perished in the hurricanes and wildfires recently. From Amy Meyer, do my dogs who have passed, Shelby and, and Bogey. Uh, Denise Hartsaw, I cherish the memory of my cat, Bonus, whose partnership lasted longer than two term human relationships. Uh, from the clans, Thank you and blessings to Sassy Olson, who just died, oh, two weeks ago. She was a great companion for my parents. From Karen Tinklenberg, my dog Betsy, who I had to give up two years ago. Becky Moffat, more candle for our cats, Bink and Arlo. From Andrea Huff, Willow, Pandora, and Lexi, still missed. From Mary Montgomery Clifford, for my cousin's dog, Jazzy, and my neighbor's dog, Alejandro, and from Andrea Huff, uh, Willer, oh, Willow, Pandora, and Lexi. For Becky Fanfara, for Theo, my feline companion of my 20s, thank you. And I will add to that list, Kira and Bo, who I miss very much, and Casey, who was my feline soulmate. From Lucy Cutler, in the memory of my Milo, not enough time together. And our family's dog, Lulu, our cat, Cree. We cherish all the memories we had and we feel your souls in ours, in our lives.
So as we look at all the beautiful candles that are lit, that Rachel has lit, to honor the lives of all those that were mentioned in our chat, as well as that are, we are holding in our hearts. We honor and acknowledge the love that we shared, the loss that we feel, and the memories that live on. I close with this prayer by Gary Kowalski called, We Give Thanks for the Animals. We give thanks for the animals who live close to nature, who remind us of the sanctities of birth and death, who do not let the trouble, who do not trouble their lives with foreboding or grief, who let go each moment as it passes and accept each new one as it comes with serenity and grace. Enable us to walk in beauty as they do, at one with the turning of the seasons, welcoming the sunrise and at peace with the sunset. As we hallow the memory of good friends now departed, who loved abundantly and in their time were loved, who freely gave us their affection and their loyalty. Let us not be anxious for tomorrow, but ask only that kindness and gratitude fill our hearts day by day into the passing years. May it be so and blessed be. I now invite you to join Diane and me in a responsive reading. The refrain is we offer our blessing and I invite you to say that along with us at home. To all the animals gathered with us today, we offer our blessing. To the pets and other animals that we have known who have taught us about love and tenderness and responsibility. We offer our blessing. To the animals who make their home on the people's church grounds, the turkeys, deer, bugs, and birds, and others who make their home in our woods, we offer our blessing. To the animals who work guiding or guarding, pulling plows and sleds, we offer our blessing. To the animals who give their lives for us as food and clothing and to advance our understanding, we offer our blessing. To the imaginary creatures, the unicorns and dragons and fictional characters who teach us to dream, to imagine, and to question, we offer our blessing to the animals who have gone extinct, the dinosaurs and the dodos and others, we honor your memory and we offer our blessing. To all the animals who suffer from cruelty, from loss of habit, climate change, we pledge ourselves to make the world more hospitable to you, for you and for us. We offer our blessing. To all animals everywhere, near and far, we offer our blessing. Thank you. 
Part of the work of living in this world is to hold grief in one hand and gratitude in the other and be stretched large by them. So on this day when we celebrate and bless and remember, I invite you to keep celebrating and blessing and remembering and carry the blessings that you've offered today out into the world to bless the world because we know it needs it right now. So go out offering blessings and go in peace and go in love. <laughs>